what drives the world. The fear-mongering used by politicians. Who makes decisions? Competitive breakthrough has already been made. Who can you trust? No one. Who is imbued with a global missionary zeal? Where are we heading? State-controlled capitalism is called fascism. When nobody dares to ask, we do. RT, question more. All right, let's go now to a video that's gone viral. You may have seen it on the internet or, or you know, at least seen the, the link for it floating around. I know that I watched it along with what was, at least by this morning, 70 million people. It's a moving video and a well-produced one at that. Uh, and we'll show you a clip of it. For 26 years, Coney has been kidnapping children into his rebel group, the LRA. turning the girls into sex slaves and the boys into child soldiers. All right, so according to the group's website, Coney 2012 is a film and campaign by the group Invisible Children that aims to make Joseph Coney famous, not to celebrate him, but to raise support for his arrest and set a precedent for international justice. Now, it's hard to find anyone who wouldn't agree that Joseph Coney is a bad, bad man. But the film seems to advocate for more U.S. involvement and direct military action. President Obama has already sent in 100 combat troops to try to get rid of Joseph Kony, which is, in no uncertain terms, the U.S. government using resources to take down and kill a man in another country. So we want to talk about some of the implications of the release of this video, especially considering how many people have now watched it. I'm joined now by Marcel Cartier, a hip-hop artist whose CD out is called Revolutionary Minded. Hey there, Marcel. Um, let's talk about this video. 70 million views and counting. Coney 2012, now the fastest growing social media video campaign we've ever seen. I want to get your thoughts on this. Well, I think that it's an excellent, excellent propaganda piece. And not for the reason that, you know, Joseph Coney is not a bad man, not that he's not guilty of these atrocious crimes against humanity, because he certainly is. But we really have to ask ourselves the question, why the sudden interest in Uganda? Why the sudden interest in Africa? And when you're calling for military invasion or intervention in a sovereign country, we really, really have to question the motives of the United States. We have to question the motives of the European powers and certainly of Invisible Children, this organization that put together this documentary. Now, when you're calling for that type of military intervention, in my opinion, it smacks of the white man's burden, basically saying there's this evil man in Africa, the African people are defenseless, they cannot rise up against him on their own, and they need us to come in and be some white saviors in Uganda. You know, I think it's very interesting also that six million people have died in the Democratic Republic of Congo in a little over a decade. Why have we not heard about this? How come most people, when you ask them, will not be aware of this Holocaust? Well, it's because the United States has benefited greatly from this proxy war in the Congo. Every cell phone, every computer needs coltan in order to function, so of course you won't hear about that. You know, and I think we can learn a lot from the recent conflict in Libya, the recent NATO intervention there, about how to really address and put this in context. There was a humanitarian intervention in Libya, right? And what's the result of that? What's been the result for black Libyans, for example? We just saw last week video footage come out of black Libyans being thrown in zoos and being forced to eat the old Libyan flag by these so-called rebels, these darlings of the West. So the United States has there. no concern. Marcel, just because you just brought up like several uh, interesting points. So, so let's, let's look at, it, at Libya. And a lot of people, at the beginning of your answer, you, you said, you asked the question, why do people all of a sudden care about Uganda? And I think, uh, you know, sort of an Another uh, aspect of this story is the social media aspect is, uh, you know, they care about it because they saw it on Facebook. They didn't see uh, stuff about it on Facebook before. Now that they have, uh, they care. Uh, but it, this is interesting because in <coughs> Libya, uh, there's oil. There is a, a U.S. interest in getting involved in, in making sure that territory, uh, that, that country um, is stable and whatever that, you know, means to, to whomever. But, um, so, so talk about this. I mean, there's no interest that we know of for the, for the U.S. to get involved in Libya, uh, sorry, in Uganda, and yet, um, you know, President Obama has already sent troops, and, and this film, the goal of this film is to try to get more. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, do you think there is, in fact, a U.S. interest? 
Most definitely. I mean, it's no coincidence that just a couple of years ago, oil was discovered in Uganda. But also a key component of this is the, Demo uh, excuse me, the People's Republic of China. And this has to do with the entire world context at the moment. For example, the U.S. is very interested in knocking down the Syrian government. They're very interested in knocking down the Iranian government after Syria. Syria is basically the domino they have to take out to get to Iran. But the U.S., and if you look at Obama, he's really talking more and more about the U.S. being a Pacific power, which means after Syria and Iran, they can go for China, you know, possibly Russia as well in that final showdown, because they, they want a unipolar world. They want this world to continue. But China has a lot of contracts in Africa. China has become a very appealing partner for a number of African countries because it's not involved in Africa in the same parasitic way that the United States is involved or that these multinational corporations from Europe are involved. They actually provide much better terms, which, you know, is really more about mutual cooperation. So I think it has a large uh, part to do also with countering China's growing influence in Uganda and throughout Africa. That's a, an interesting argument. I, I haven't heard that one yet. Um, uh, what do you think, I mean, if the U.S. did get, you know, stay on top of this and decide to get more involved, what impact do you think it could have uh, in terms of bringing stability to what is uh, very much right now a conflict-ridden country? Well, if it brings stability, it's going to bring stability under imperialism. It's going to bring stability under, you know, basically subjugation to U.S. interests. And, you know, they are going for this. We see it because AFRICOM was launched a couple of years ago. That's the U.S. African Command. You know, they make it very clear that, in fact, they are very interested in having a deeper role in Africa. Of course, everything gets clouded in humanitarian rhetoric, that they're doing things for the people of Africa. In reality, you know, this, the United States has never intervened anywhere on the face of the planet for the interests of the masses of people. There's always a geostrategic, a geopolitical reason for their involvement. Same thing in Uganda. I mean, it's just going to continue to bring plenty of misery to the people there. And here's another very important fact. The United States, they work hand in hand with the Ugandan government, which is itself accused of major crimes against humanity, which is a point about the Kony 2012 video that wasn't pointed out. They showed a very one-sided view of things, but the Ugandan government is involved in putting the Akoli people in concentration camps, all with the backing of the United States, of course. You know, so any stability that's brought to that region is going to be a stability of exploitation and oppression. Marcel, we're almost out of time, but I do want to talk about some, some of the impact of this video. Uh, again, as we said, 70 million people and counting have viewed it. And if you turn on the TV today, uh, just about any of the cable networks, many of them were covering the story. And many of them were doing so in a pretty positive light. I want to show a quick clip that we saw uh, on CNN from Piers Morgan. To be honest, if this happened in any other country, it would make world news. Mm -hmm. It's taken 26 years and nine years of our work to say, this is important. These children's lives matter. And, and we need to get that. We need to understand that. And we are. We're waking up to that. And it's changing the world. Uh, so what do you think? I mean, do you, is the mainstream media doing a good job of, of sort of painting this as a propaganda piece? Or is it, um, you know, not telling the whole story? Well, what the mainstream media should do if it's interested in human rights is um, talk about a Bush 2012. Bush is easily the biggest war criminal walking around freely in, you know, across the planet. He's directly responsible for the deaths of at least a million and a half Iraqis. That far dwarfs anything that Joseph Kony is accused of. You know, and Obama's a war criminal too. Let's just be honest about this. You know, he's a Nobel Peace Prize winner, but he definitely shouldn't have received that. What about Netanyahu 2012? You know, I guess the message here is that it's okay to kill, it's not okay to kill children unless you're the United States or you're Israel, and then it's suddenly just fine. All right, certainly some interesting perspectives there. Always good to have you on, Marcel Cartier, hip-hop artist in our studios in New York. Thanks so much. Thank you.